So it is January the 22nd, 2015, and we are at Badger's, and I'm talking to Jenny Richardson. Jenny, you've been in the village a lovely long time. Can you tell me when you first came? Approximately 40 years, because daughter is over 40 and she was a baby in arms when we moved in. Two badgers. Into so badgers, you've been yes. in badgers all that time? Yes. Brilliant. So uh, have you done much to change badgers? Is it different? It is different. Um, my stepfather was an architect or apprentice architect to Goodhart Rendell, who did a lot of the architecture oh, in the village. Oh, really? And therefore he knew exactly what was in Goodhart Rendell's thoughts when these cottages were built and designed. Oh, that's amazing. And we had the extension of the garage with the space above. At one point, I came home and discovered two complete strangers in my garden. One was arguing that if they turned it round, they would pass it, and the other one said, if you turn it round, it will be sticking out, and therefore I won't pass it. Two gentlemen from Guildford Borough Council arguing <laughs> as to whether they should pass the design or not. But my stepfather had been on the council, on Guildford Borough Council, so he knew how to work it. Hmm. So we got the extension, not quite as we wanted it, but it was wonderful. So, yes. All was well. All was well. So, um, how old is, is the cottage? Not old. Um, I've got plans in the dining room. Um, it's not a good heart rental, is it? He, he, yes, he designed it, but it's not that old. He designed it in two inch brick instead of two and a half inch brick, so it, it toned in with the village. Right. So we had to, if we'd wanted the two, the small bricks made for the whole garage, we couldn't have afforded it. So the only bit that we had made in the old style brick was just the little bit above, well, by the back door and in other words to join up because it was slanting and then we raised it up like that. So it was a triangle of, yeah. we didn't want to put new bricks in, so we had small bricks made. So. Um, there, there were other two estate cottages. It, it, they're this part, lot they're part and that one. Yes, there's the Sophie Cottage and and Home Farm home Cottages. Farm. But they, the Home Farm Cottages I moved in was the Hamblins, and he actually helped build this house. Right. So there's quite a lot of connections in this little area because the Hamblins, as I say, the chap did help build this house and Goodhart Rendell had a thing about chimneys and if you go outside you'll notice that all the chimneys are absolutely in the middle of the roof. Yes. Therefore he wanted the chimneys in the middle and therefore the chimney breasts went all the way down to every room taking up an awful lot of space. Oh how fascinating. No it takes a lot of space up. <laughs> yes of course. Because yes, course. every room had a, had a fire. Yes, yes, of course. Well, needed it, yes. Needed it, definitely. So the, um, these were estate cottages, but, but attached to home farm, presumably. Um, that I don't know. I think, well, certainly... But he, he built, he designed them all, did he? Well, or, he had something to do with it. Because there were four cottages, is it, is it the, the, the four we're talking about? Well, Home Farm and Sophie Cottages, because this was called Sophie Cottage as well, but the predecessor, our predecessors, changed it to Badgers. Right. And I'm afraid, as far as I was concerned, houses are a bit like boats, you don't change their name. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't going to try and change it again. Yes. yes. So we yes. kept the name Badgers. And Home Farm Cottages 1 and 2, are they the same age? They are be older than this one. They are. Well, I think there must be, because if he helped build this one, mm -hmm. his must be, he must have been older, because he was living in it while he helped build this house, I presume. Who was? Mr. Hamlin. Mr. Hamlin. And yeah. I think he had a big family, so yeah. I don't know if it was his yeah. sons or yeah. him or what. Yeah. So, um, I mean, this is fascinating. Mm. You you have got close connections, or, or sort of once removed, oh, do absolutely. good heart Rendell. Well, just that my stepfather was an architect and did sort of his apprenticeship with Goodhart Rendell. Oh, really? So... You, can you remember him? 
who my, my stepfather yeah, is. Yeah, good Art Randall. No, 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 no. Because no, he died in 56. I was going to say, he? yes. Yeah. But you heard about him, presumably, oh, yes. from your stepfather. It, well, yes, and yes, definitely. I mean, were there any anecdotes of, about him? Because we have, you know, very interesting people who, who remember him but can't actually remember much about him, sort of going to Hatchlands to the Christmas parties and ah, that sort of well, thing. well, that sort of... I don't remember ever seeing him there. Mm, and we used yeah. to go up for the carols. You went to those? Well, in, we always yeah. had the carols. They were different sort of set up compared with what we have now in Hatchlands. But they were in the music room, and or sometimes we were just um, just around the staircase, all in the hall there, singing our hearts out, <laughs> yes. which was which was lovely. Yes. But it, it definitely was a thing to do, and in those days, it was a bit early, so Paul would have to leave work early to get down in time for the whole family to go up and sing their hearts out, which they did, which he did, mm. which was great. Paul being your husband. husband yes. Um, Second husband, being so truthful. Right. So um, people would make a point of coming home from work so that they could go to Hatchlands. Oh, yes, yes. Which I don't think happens now, does it? It's well, because it's early anyway. It's three o'clock. Mm. It's in the afternoon. And, and it's on a Saturday. Yes, um, certainly it used to be a weekday evening. It was certainly wasn't a weekend. Really? Mm. Do you remember who used to play? I mean, what did they have the I piano or did they play? They played it from the music room, presumably. I, would, I thought it was Sue Body, with the bodies. Yes, yes, yes. Who yes. used to live in the village. Yes, yes. Um, I met her. I thought it was her that used to play. Oh. Certainly didn't get Sebastian or anything posh like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, she was lovely to do it. Yeah. And it was yes. all, you know, yes. done in good heart. But um, yes. And certainly there are plenty of other lovely people in the village then that Is when I first came, organised a coffee morning so that I could be introduced to the rest of the, any young people with babes and young children. Yes. Mm. And that was Ira Nelson and... Yes, who do you remember from the village at that time? Ira Nelson particularly, I can't remember her Christian name, but Bingy Newland used to live opposite Ira Nelson. Uh, and then there's the Martin Jenkins, Christopher Martin Jenkins. Now, can you remember him? Oh, very much so, yes. Ah, tell me, because uh, you see, he, he was at... Um, Old Harris Cottage, wasn't yes. he? Named it Old Harris Cottage, I believe. But but we want to talk to um, the Evans who now live there, but they mm. say they don't know anything about him. So if you can remember things about him, because, I mean, he's, he's probably the mo biggest Famous. personality <laughs> yeah. that lived in the village, yes. Um, well, his son and Lucy, my daughter, were at play school together, so obviously I got to know them. And it, I suppose he wasn't as famous then as he ended up being. Mm. And in fact, once we went to Iwanano Theatre and he actually needed to borrow some money from Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he'd bought something, bought a drink or something, didn't have enough money or something, but it was yes. really quite funny. Yes, that. yes. So, so he used to sort of fit in with the village. Oh, absolutely, and, yes. Yeah, yeah. And it was very much a little village because with the play school, you all met at the play school. Where was that? Oh, in the village hall. Village Hall. School, and Mary yeah. Prophet lived in Bay Cottage, Bay Tree, Bay Tree, Tree. Yeah. and the Braleys lived in Manor Farm, where the fate was all the time was in the Manor Farm. Old was, Manor Farm. And you used the, her kitchen was definitely used for the teas and <laughs> that sort of thing. Yes. And when it was wet, we all went into the garages and things like that, and still had the fate. Yes. Um, and there was Delia and Thierry Miel in Lamp Cottage. They yeah. owned the Café de Paris in... Blay School was wonderful because, to begin with, Lucy used to go two or three mornings, just, just morning times, but towards the end of her time there, they, she could take a picnic lunch and stay till half past two or something like that to get used to her being away from home for a meal and therefore ready for How big superb. school the next time. Next so step. did Mary Prophet run it? Yes. Yes. And helpers like Inga. I mean, not Inga. Lisbeth. No, 
Oh, Lisbeth helped at the play school because her son was at the play school too. Was she living here at that time or I in West? I think she lived in Merrow then. A Merrow. I think. Mm. I should be able to tell you. Yes. So people would come f f from outside right. of it. Oh, absolutely. So how many used to go? Well, here's a picture of their... Where is it? There were quite a lot. That is their Christmas production. Production? Oh, well, they did a little thing, you How know. wonderful. And we all, all the parents. And on the stage oh, on in the, the stage. village oh, hall. Absolutely. And there must be 15 to 20 children there. Well, I mean, they used to come from miles away. And, and the scenery. Yes. And a Christmas tree. It was wonderful. And most of these children from the village. So it must have been a much younger community than it is now, do you think? Well, possibly. I think the trouble is a lot of the young now go to, if you like, private school type, because Which education now start starts younger than it used to. And all the private schools seem to have tacked on creches and play schools to their main job, if you like. So it sounds as though there was um, a much, well, I mean, it is a wonderful community now and it is it has a wonderful community spirit, but it seems to be more like a family feel to the village mm. that, that all the young used to get together. And I mean, I do know some of the children there did come, for instance, from Burn Common. One, she was a, uh, an air stewardess and her daughter and my daughter got on very well. Or was it my son? I get confused. No, I think it was with Sam, actually. Mm. And we used to be able to chop and change, you know, that she could pick Sam up and I could pick Natalie up. I see, yes, yes. If we needed to. Yes. But both my children went to the play school and by the time they went to big school, were used to having lunch away from mum. I'm doing it again. And therefore... Wonderful introduction. Used to being away for more, a longer time, more like a proper day at school. Mm. So they were... It was perfect. And what about um, the, the parents of, of, of these children? I mean, did you have a, 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 a nice social life together? Um, I think, actually, because we live out of the village as such, we get together at the play school, but on the whole, I was busy trying to work right. and trying to keep my household together because at that point husband had left therefore I was trying to bring Lucy up on my own mm. so it wasn't so clever yes of course not so course you don't not. don't sort of fit in you aren't, aren't a pair if you know what I mean yes I do <laughs> so, um, so it was a bit you know, but everyone was very helpful and as I say you you would pick someone else's child up quite happily in those days you didn't need the permission to pick someone else's child up you didn't have to have this Mm. whatever it is yes checking out that you are Health who you say you are. And legal yes. Things, yes. Yes. yes yes and I mean the sort of thing you go and take your child to the play school and then more often than not possibly when you pick them up was when the library came because that I missed that I used to come to the village in oh, a van so, so where where would that it would park, park up well Tyth Barn's name Tyth Barn by it would top, park by the barn at the top there and how often would that come? Once a week. Once a week. Mm -hmm. So presumably there was a gathering of, of the clans Absolutely. as you came to the library van. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that was, uh, I can't say it's a high spot, but from my point of view, that was a nice excuse. If play school had finished and Lucy had had her food, then we'd walk back up the village mm. to change books and meet mm. more people. Wonderful. And then be opposite the shop. Well, it wasn't a shop. It was only a post office when the garage door was open. When the garage door was open, you could go and get a post office, post order or stamps or whatever, your child benefit or whatever it was. But only when the garage door was open. <laughs> so there was uh, no sort of routine to that. You just had to keep your eyes open. Um, I think there probably was, but I'm damned if I could remember mm -hmm. what, what actually was mm -hmm. the timings of it. 
So, um, who was running that at that time? That I don't know, but I get, I had the impression that they bought the property for the house rather than for the business. Because I don't think right. running a post office was that high on their priorities. Oh, I see. So, I mean, you don't remember much about the house at that time? No. Mm. No, because again, being down here, you don't, you walk past it mm. to get yes. to play school or yes. the church or the pub or whatever. So, where was the garage door then? Because In the front, it's there. Is it? Where the cars park. At the moment, they haven't got a garage, in my knowledge. Well, it, it was the where outside. the car parked was straight on. Right. Maybe they made that a room now, maybe they've changed it. Right. Yes, well, we can ask Roger about yes, that, can't we? Roger <laughs> about that. So, wonderful. So, um, what do you remember about the fate? Fate was always in Manor Farm with the Brady's. Old oh, Manor Farm. Well, it was, it, was it called just Manor Farm then? Because we've got new Manor Farm and old Manor Farm, haven't we? No, it's old Manor Farm. Mm -hmm. Yes, in there. Mm -hmm. Always. And if it was raining, or you all scurried into the outbuildings there. Put all the barns, yes. And you yeah. all carried on, you know, yeah. regardless. And so did the Baileys organise it? The Braileys. Braileys. Brailey. Yes. Well, I presumed they did. But I didn't know, I didn't, I wasn't up to saying whether there was a committee like there is now, or what. I don't know. It just happened. Well, <laughs> it appeared to. We all did our duties and so what would be your duty then there i don't know what i did then but we always did find ourselves busy mm. i mean lovely thierry who's died which was very sad mm. he did a crepe because he's french he did a crepe stall and it was wonderful you know so where did he live he was lamp cottage yes yes, yes. um and uh, the, what the the usual sort of stalls sort well of the crepes sort of was a lovely thing Brick a brack and things like that, I suppose. And the, and yes, the, and, and, I'm, and pony rides and yes. I'm trying to think. Was it as was it as large? A, a no, a I don't think so. Like it was in the garden. Yes. Therefore, you're restricted really. Yes. By yes. the space. Yes. But then one year it was in the field, as you're going out of the village on your left before you get to the main road. Mm. In other words, almost opposite the the tennis court mm -hmm. in the field there. Mm -hmm. It was there and that was quite tricky really. I don't think that the sa had the same atmosphere at all but it mm. didn't last in there so mm. then I don't know where it went then. Did it go to Bug? Had Bug moved in by then? Mm. Don't know. But it happened, it was mm. an annual event. Oh, it, annual event definitely, yes. yes. And what about other sort of um, high points? Yeah, high points. And what about sort of things like harvest suppers and things like that? Do you remember? Oh, well, they sort of happened. And I so don't think they were quite as... Um, was it the sort of thing where, where people would, would bring, whether it was shepherd's pie or... Certainly uh, you'd bring uh, puddings. Uh, an apple pie and things you, like you'd that. You'd bring the desserts. Mm. It, that yeah. would certainly happen. And... The th one thing in my memory very much was the Silver Jubilee, which oh, we, ended, we yes. ended up with yes. a tea party in Snellgate, because Snellgate by then was a cul-de-sac. And, and you was, could have a street party? We was had it? Well, it was a tea party for the children, really. Yes. And I don't know if some of these were That's guests lovely. of, or sisters and brothers of the various children. I don't know, I can't remember what the age was. But that's my daughter's there, and Claire Brayley is there. Looks like there are about 30 Carol. children in that. Wonderful. Well, there could be brothers and sisters as well, you see. Wonderful picture of a long table with, with lots of food on it, and flowers, and Union Jacks. And party and hats. with party hats. And that's a coloured one there, a small colour one. Fantastic. And that lot. Yes. And they look like homemade party hats to me, oh. so I wonder whether there was a competition. Or maybe think? in play school they had to make their maybe, hats. Maybe they did. They more than likely did make their own hats. Yes, and can you remember having to bring in food for it? Oh, you all bought a plate of food. You all bought a plate of food. A plate of biscuits or cakes or something like that. Yes, yes. 
so that is glorious and that would be what 77 well it was uh, yes. silver jubilee yes, yes. <laughs> and i can't remember if all the children were actually given little mugs but i could have a look and see eventually mm -hmm. in the kitchen she might have one in the kitchen well if it survived okay. so how old was lucy for that do you reckon uh well i think she must have been at play school so she's sort of over over two and a half Yes, so but, but not yet five. Oh, certainly not five, no, no, I wouldn't have said so. No. Wonderful. I mean, that looks like a, a, a really lovely village event. It was, it yes, it was quite an event. And and they didn't have to close the roads off because it wasn't, it was closed anyway. So there was a, you know. That was a good idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, compared with when we had it in our village, the amount of problems with closing the roads and getting permissions and all the rest of it, to do that mm. is a lot of work. Snellgate is much more convenient, isn't it? Yes. I wouldn't have had a car going through and <laughs> disturbing you all, or trying to disturb you all. Brilliant. So, um, I mean, we still have these events where we all get together as a village, but the, I mean, there are just so many more children here, aren't there? As I say, they're not all necessarily from the village. They mm. could be friends. I don't know whether it's friends or just brothers and sisters. You know, that adds quite a few if you've got yes, other bits of children. Of course, yes. And um, you remember the, the, the church, the church services? Uh, yes. Can you remember any of, any of the vicars or rectors? Um, yes. Do you remember Father Brown? We've, we've been talking to other people people say, oh, Father Brown, um, the church was so full of incense that you could hardly see a cross. <laughs> no, no, that's one I don't remember at all, no. no. Probably a bit Bef earlier. Before my time, I think. Yes. And to be honest, I probably wasn't going to church because I had Lucy and no one yes. necessarily to help me. Yes. Um, it was quite hard. And to be honest, Saturdays and Sundays, when she went to her father, I worked mm. the weekend, therefore I didn't have to get a babysitter so you can't be in two places no you can't funnily enough <laughs> <laughs> however hard I might try but I mean if you if you did go I mean did you go for sort of Christmas and Easter and those sort of things or if or I was at home yes. but I, I wasn't more often than not I wasn't here because my family would all say well don't you know I wouldn't yes. be on my own yes. with Lucy yes. so we'd be I just um, in in your memory um, it, when you did go I mean it, do you, do you, can you remember it as different? Do you remember it as the church as very full? I remember some of the vicars just had, did their sermons like a bullet point, like a presentation, yeah. and there was no feeling. It was just tick, 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 and it was just awful. Yeah. You really, oh, really felt you were being lectured rather than talked to, and really? it really you know, put you off. Mm. It, it's not what you want to go there for. Um, Yes, that's from another sort of generation, isn't it? And I it, think really? there was a Canadian vicar, and he was a bit... Uh, maybe it was him. And I mean, so much so, you don't actually remember the name, because yes. you... Yes, because he didn't make much, much impression. No, compared um, with Barry Priest or Barnaby. I think that's the one before Barry Priest, who, who was either American or Canadian, I've heard about him. But I can't remember his name. No, so. I can't either. Um, and there's Creswell, and he was yeah. a bit tricky too. Yeah, but he's still down the road in yes. Oxford, isn't yes, he? Yes, he is. Yes. And he appeared, wouldn't he? I can't remember yes, when he, he was. Yes, he does come back for some things. Yes. yes. And um, actually, um, interestingly enough, would like to talk to to us with his memories of the village. So, I'd, so I'd be interested to hear so what that would be interesting, yes, won't it? Yes, it would, absolutely. Won't, yes. So, um, what other things can, can you remember about, about the place, do you think? Um, uh, what would you say... Um, are there any standout points of changes in the village? Well, the fact that we lost, we don't have the library anymore, we don't have the play school anymore, we don't have the post office because the garage door doesn't open much because <laughs> <laughs> it's gone away. Yes. And interesting enough, I haven't been snowed in recently because uh, there's one time we really got snowed in. We, the 
wind blew the snow through the gateways and we couldn't go up that way or down the other way. And that was impressive because the milkman used to stop his float up, up in the village and walk down with his bottles of milk for us, which I thought was brilliant. Yes, that's good. And I was telling Ian because Lucy was at um, St Catherine's and I rang them up and said, I'm terribly sorry, we can't get, I can't get her to you, can't get out. Ah, oh, well, that's all right, we'll send you some homework. I said, excuse me, you don't understand. I, if I can't get out, the postman cannot get in. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which is when Paul started making bread and Lucy and I went for a walk and when we came home we could smell the bread and it was a wonderful smell. How lovely, yes. So do you reckon it was a more regular occurrence to be snowed in? Yes, I would have said so. In the last century, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, quite often you'd have the road just with the two lines of a, a car and you're just stuck in the, in the line with the snow in, in the, the middle. In the grooves, yes. yes. Yeah. Up and down, Yeah. quite often like that. Yeah. And Giles Hill Lane became such a nice rink became quite tricky. Which lane? Giles Hill. When oh, you go yes. over the top. Yes. I yes, mean, yes. Miss Ripley. Yes, yes. That one. That became like an ice rink. So we got quite used to that. And we never actually managed to skate on the sheep dip pond, but Lucy used to go fishing in the fish pond. And the hatchlands. Had, yes. And you all, so that you got used to freeze, did it? I don't think it did. We used to go to Boldermere, Wisley Lake, you know, up the A3 on the right there. Mm -hmm. That used to freeze, and I've got some lovely pictures of that, all oh, frozen wonderful, over and wonderful. having lovely games in that. But again, mm -hmm. that was some years ago, not yes, now. Yes, yes. So did you have sort of siege rations so that um, you... you <laughs> or was, was that nowadays, when we, now we've got the village email, much when we get to snowed in, yeah. yeah, people sort of say, you know, did anybody want any milk or mm. that sort of thing. What was the sort of backup system in those days, or was there any? Um, did people help each other? You all look after each other. Still you know, did. I would, Still did. I can remember coming home once, on my own with Lucy, to discover that the boiler had gone wrong and the water had frozen, so I had no water, no heat, nothing, so I lit the fire. Um, how awful. It wasn't good. It wasn't good. And we'd done a long journey to get home. I think we'd come home from Suffolk or somewhere to find everything absolutely freezing. But we managed. And I think... Did people rally round and help Grace you? next door came round with a... I don't know. It was a thermos or a saucepan full of hot water. But luckily, although there's no gas in the village, I had insisted on having gas, So I had a hob. So I could boil water or cook mm, mm. not use the oven because that was electric but i could actually do something mm. so we we survived must have been scary yeah, it's not good days. yes now at that time who was at new manor farm where i mean how many of, of now we've got these beautiful old farmhouses which are which are very luxurious dwellings <laughs> i mean how many um when you first remember you know in, in the 70s how many of those houses would have actually been farmhouses and, and the land farmed? None. None, even then? Well, um, not in my knowledge. Not New Manor Farm. Where is New Manor Farm then? That's, that's Bugs. Oh, Bugs. No, no, no. When I moved in, it was the Mellor family who were a lovely family. Uh, their youngest was had Sina Bifta, and there were two others. I can't remember the names, but they no, they weren't farmers. They, weren't they farmers. had she had horses. At one point they had um, sheep, tried guinea fowl, and at that one point, I found Paul herding the sheep down the road, which was hysterical. So they all got out. <laughs> and another time, and he certainly Paul looked a bit scared because. One of the horses jumped over the fence into our garden because they re he realised the horse must have realised it went straight on the um, compost heap, <laughs> so it leapt over onto the onto our lawn and came galloping gently down the lawn, not with Paul running behind in front of him, but you know, it was rather big mm. and a bit scary. 
Mm. So, must have been. Jenny, who lived at Home Farm um, many years ago? When I moved in, it was the Mellors, that's Catherine, and I think it was Andrew, with a lovely family. I think it was two boys and Dinah, who was had si spina bifida, and she even babysat for me once. It was rather sweet. Oh, lovely. Um, but she, certainly they weren't farmers, but she had horses, and at one point she had guinea fowl, which are a bit noisy, yes. and sheep, which actually escaped, and we had to herd them down the road, <laughs> and the horse that chased Paul down the garden, which <laughs> was a bit scary for oh. him. Must but have been, yeah. then they But they were not farmers. Farmed. Then, farmed. then the Biddles, and they had a son who was the same sort of age as Sam, which was nice. Um, and then I think it was Bug and Neil right. after that. Right. So Can you remember uh, the tithe barn before it was converted? No. You can't? No. That's interesting. So it must have been done just the time that you came to the village? Well, again, living down here, and if you didn't go up to the village all the time, you wouldn't notice what was going on. Mm. Mm. Can, can you remember Jim, Jim Baker? Oh, yes. And, and, and his, did he in those days do the maintenance of the grass cutting and the hedge cutting in the village? Or was he, he used to, of course, look after the pigs in the tithe barn. Yeah. <laughs> um, all I know is that Jim, and there was another gentleman, and I can't remember his name, but he used to live in, I think it was Warren Cottages, mm -hmm. before the Rands took over. Mm -hmm. And they, as a couple, two blokes, used to come down and visit Grace and Alan in the cottage here, my other half of this house. Mm -hmm. And they used to go off in a dormobile on various excursions, but they certainly used to go and watch plow matches and, and things like this. Oh, wonderful. But I don't know where, because obviously... I you didn't have any in the village? No, they were always a little bit out of the village. Yes, yes, so yes. I yes, wouldn't yes. have known that one. Yes. But Jim Bacon always used to be coming down here, I suppose once a week. They probably used to go to either Ripley for a drink or William? Oh yes. I think, of horse, yes. but with, for a drink. So Alan would go, because Grace and Alan were, scared me rigid actually, they used to have a um, pop pop motorbike, <laughs> but also he had a three wheel car, Reliant, oh, yeah, which was, <laughs> it was a little bit scary, but they used to go off, I mean he used to take her in the, in the three wheel car, yeah. which made the drive quite interesting for next people who came to that house because it had sort of three wheels rather than two wheels. <laughs> Strange sort of humpy bumpy drive. Do you remember Jim's mother? No. Jim Baker's mother, you don't? No. Because no. um, we're looking forward to, to talking to Jim. I bet. Um, but um, I have to get him in his right sort of mood. We, we will. We will. We'll get there Roger's a good one with that. Yes. Now, what are the other things that we should... What about the pub? Can you remember the pub? Distinctly. Good. It went through so many phases, I can't tell you. When we were snowed in, Paul and I and Lucy went up to the village with her on the toboggan. Yes. And we walked up to the village. There was no one in the pub. And we went in, hoping to get warm but we were thrown out because she was underage. Um, but he, he, I mean, Paul did buy a drink for us. So we sat outside having ice drinks and there was so much snow, we built snowmen on all the seats. So they wouldn't even let you stay inside? No, 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 we snow. weren't allowed to stay inside. <laughs> we were only people in the pub, but they wouldn't let us stay. And we made rather rude looking <laughs> snowmen on the on the seats. Because you, you know, got rather fed up with them. Yeah. And there was another, I mean, I can't remember how much earlier it was, but in those days you could get real um, good platefuls of food and in the public bar you could get chip butties 
there wasn't exactly sawdust on the floor, but you could get I was going to say, a what, chip sandwich. Has it changed inside? Yes, much? a lot, a lot. There was, you know, in those days there was a, a posh bar and a, a saloon. One bar you could go in your, yeah. having done the motor mowing or painting or anything, you could go in and get your chip butty yes. and yes. just have a drink. But then it went smart, which okay has to make it money. And then there was the, the the lot that changed it into the wishing well, and even built a wishing well in the little garden. I, I think I've heard about that. It wasn't terribly it, popular. Oh, was it? <laughs> awful! Absolutely awful. <laughs> there were some sort of two rooms in the pub then, yes. because it's all kind of almost open plan now. No, isn't no, no. It? You definitely with a dartboard, and I don't know if it was Shark Apney or, or something else, but you had two bars. He's waving his hands. Do you want to stop? No, he didn't. Oh, I don't know. Hang on. Where were we? So we were talking about um, the, the different rooms in the pub. Well, a certain gentleman tells me there was a games room as well as a public and, and the posh one, but I don't remember the games room, possibly because it was full of men playing darts and things like that and I'm an, a girl and in those you days wouldn't go in you wouldn't sort of go in there especially if you've got a two and a half year old or three year old or something of course not so you but yes. so was it was it was the pub full then was it well frequented well certainly by villagers by the public side you go in having mown the lawn or doing the decorating whatever else you go in for a quick as mm. I say chip butty which is what they did mm. And other things as well, I'm sure, but I couldn't afford any more than that. <laughs> it's literally chip butties. Yeah, <laughs> chip butties. Very tasty. Yes, I'm sure. Yeah. Very filling. You needed it after you mowed the lawn. <laughs> yes. Um. So I, I mean, I'm, I wasn't a pub goer regularly, but certainly if I had friends or people visiting, you could take them up to the pub, mm. and even if they'd been helping me in the garden with your welly boots, you could go in the public bar. Mm. None of this, you know, boots and mm. whatever else. But at least now you can take dogs into the pub. Because at one point you were Can you? Well, people certainly seem to. Oh, really? So when do you reckon that it changed into being... Um, posh. Posh, I suppose, is the way to put it, yes. Well, I think it must have been around after the wishing well. And it became back to the Queen's head. And I can't remember his name, is it Mark? Mm -hmm. Took over. Mm. Then it started becoming posh. And to begin with, he was very much for the village. And I'm sure he is at heart still. But he's expanded a lot. Therefore, he's not there very much to no, be with the village. He's not there at all, I think, now. I've well, seen little. him very briefly. Mm. Yes. He's got another manager, anyway. Yes. Danny, so Danny's about, yes. Well, she so seems to. She seems to have a lot for the village anyway, and she, I thought, was wonderful. She actually read lessons in the church. Yes. It was nice to be part of a village. Precisely. I yes. was most yes. touched. Oh, good. Well, yeah. I thought it was good. Yes. And bless her, she was so frightened. I was yes, so I'm glad sure that she will. did it, which yeah. is great. Well, it's twice she's done it, hasn't she now? Oh, yes. yes. So it's really and good. she's she's offered um, booze next year for the party afterwards, oh, which really? is great. Oh, that is good. <laughs> which is lovely. Mm. So when, do, when did the sort of villagers' night uh, get instigated? That was, I thought it was Bug that organised it, talking to Mark. Right. And I don't know how it came about. I'm awfully glad it did, because mm. it is a chance to meet villagers, certainly from down here, that you don't get a chance to meet properly, yes. unless it is at the pub. Yes, yes. It, I mean, it's sad. The only sad thing is that of all his pubs, the Queen's Head hasn't got anywhere to sit. Other, other of their chain, if you like, because there's, what, three or four of them now, I think? Oh, five. Have got sitting areas, more areas that you could go just for a drink rather than going to sit at a table and have food. Right. Because, it, you know, wherever we stand... Oh, you mean you've got to stand round the bar? Yes, you, you, mm. there's nowhere else to be. Mm. You either take up a table just to have drinks, which they don't want to do that. They want just yes. to buy food. Yes. And there wouldn't be a table for us, I don't think. It's so popular. Mm. So it is unfortunate that you can't yes. go and 
without blocking and, and the area. in the summer when you sit yes, outside, outside, of course. Yes. Yeah. But it's nice, they do all the lovely nibbles. Yes. They do yes. lovely, delicious nibbles. Yes. No, it's wonderful. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a good thing. And it has become the heart of the village. Yes. It hasn't well, yet. Because yeah. we haven't got the post office anymore. Mm. And we haven't got the play school anymore. Um, mm. So it's a shame from that point of view. But it's good that the pub welcomes us. Precisely. Not in our dirty clothes necessarily, though. Can you remember any changes to the road? Oh, we were looking at, through my um, pictures because we were trying to find the picture of the, the oh, Silver Jubilee party. Yes. And in doing that, both Paul and I noticed the picture of actually a pony and trap going up our lane. Oh, wonderful. And we both said, it's not the same sort of road. And I said, no, there are white lines now, but they didn't have white lines then, either in the middle or at the edge. And a pony and trap going down Rip Ripley Road. I up, think it was up, going up. Here, up. here. It was probably going up. What, what, can you sort of roughly give a date? Oh, it was probably for a wedding or something like that, but I don't know what it was doing. Oh, I see. Because at one point, was it Carol Cook or Wooden Lies? We had a whole lot of pony and trap things in oh yes in yes. the farm somewhere. Oh, I see. So it wasn't a sort of normal transport occurrence. Of um, <laughs> no, it wasn't a normal like... trance. No, but I, I mean, I have seen pony and traps several times, but they might yes. be a local person yes. going out for a ride. Yes. For a, yes. a jaunt or a trip or something. But presumably, I mean, the road would have been made up. Oh, is it was paid up? I mean, when I first arrived, they had literally just put in the main drainage, and it was a nightmare to start really? with. Really? Mm. In 74? Something like that. I, I wished it had been the gas, but it wasn't the gas. It was main drainage. It was main drainage. Well, that's interesting. Um, and presumably all the roadsides were already in. There weren't many. There weren't many road signs. That's we, I mean, saying. we had no 30 mile limits, it wasn't, didn't do that. No. We didn't have 30 mile limits, we didn't have... Was it safe to walk up and down the road? Well, that's what I did, mm. all the time. I used to walk down to the prison, up to the, um, obviously to the village, and I used to cycle around as well, no problems. Mm. But it, I suppose it's what you're used to. If people are used to pavements, they are looking for them. Mm. But if you're not used to them, you walk against the traffic and wear bright clothes. Mm. Hence why I wear seriously bright yellow jackets so that people can actually see me. Mm. And don't. Uh, Patricia Barnett talks about, who lived down at um, Sussex Farmhouse. Yes, oh, she's lovely. And um, she talks about remembering her children riding up and down Ripley Road on their ponies. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And yes. um, you wouldn't, it would be Sorry, dangerous I'm to do that now. I mean, you could, but. People do, mm. people do, and I think I probably would. But I was never that keen on riding. I used to have a love-hate relationship with horses. <laughs> <laughs> well, my uncle gave his three daughters, uh, daughters' nieces, a pony, and I was the youngest. And I don't know if ever I got on it for my turn to ride, Major would always fling me off into the <laughs> duck pond or whatever. <laughs> And then I wasn't allowed to get back on because I'd ruin the polish on the saddle. <laughs> or it was me that got bitten or trodden on or anything else. So I yeah. had a sort of love-hate relationship. I quite with. understand that. <laughs> um, now, what have we not covered? Can, can you remember any... No, it's, it's too recent, isn't it? There wouldn't be dead difference in farming methods and... Oh, yes, I can. Like you I can. Mean, well, only that, that the tractors are much, much bigger with wider arms, so they don't take so long to go up and down the fields to cover them all. Um, they seem to use more chemicals than natural, allowing na nature. And it worries me that they don't, don't allow a sort of, if you like, a pavement of nature around the fields yes. for the birds and the wildlife. But then the fields are a bit small, and if they want to make the money, presumably they have to use the most. Because we used to have lap, lap rings in the field here. Oh, which are glorious. Wonderful. Yeah. But I haven't seen them now for two or three years. What about the pond? I'm thinking of the moorhens on the pond. Do you, has that always been there in your memory? 
You mean the pond, the Hatchlands pond? No, I mean the pond in Back Lane. Oh, that pond. Which I'm told is man, man-made. Oh, it is, very much so. It's, it, there was a sort of, I think it was a dew pond, but it's now very much been made. I mean, the Do diggers, you remember it being done? Again, not being close to seeing it and n- without mm. a, a child to push yeah. in a pushchair, you yeah. don't do your circuit and bumps to check on everything. No. But I certainly remember it being done and benches putting you around do. it. Yes. You do, and the benches. Well, benches are quite new. Are they? Well, relatively, I think. There mm. weren't benches when I first used to walk around there. Really, really. Because that's, that's a, lo- a lovely spot for wildlife and yes. the moorhens and, and all the mallards. And in fact, I, again, I was looking at pictures, and at one point we had, I would like to say, at least 30 ducks in our garden going up and down and looking. I don't know if they were trying to keep out of the way of the shooting people who were shooting in the pond across the way there, but they were all in our garden. <laughs> <laughs> so who would be shooting? Would it be the from 40s. the 40s? The 40s lot, yes. Yeah. And they still do, presumably. Oh, absolutely. One hears a lot. Well, yes, it's a one thing they can make money out of. I mean, they breed the pheasants mm. and put them down. And in fact, the old keeper, Vic Brown, in Pond Cottage, I mean, he and my first husband knew each other. And therefore, I could take Lucy and go and show her the animals and well, the ducks and everything else and the pheasants, baby pheasants and everything else. Mm. And once they've bred the pheasants or fattened them up, then they put them out and that's when it becomes Death Alley Alley from the bridge to the prison. I used to nickname it Death Alley because it was just littered with dead pheasants. Oh, goodness. What about the, the um, Sawpit Lane and, and the bit down, you know, which, which, which you says think? private keep out? Mm-hmm. Can you remember a time when you could walk through down to, to the perimeter of Hatchlands, the other side of the Hatchlands estate, or has Absolutely. it always been blocked? No, I used to be able to. I used to walk down past the pond, past the sheep. Di- the sheep yes, dip, yes, yes, yes. Uh, the or other, the other side of the of the fence from it, round that that road. If you go well, down, down Sawpit Lane, Sawpit Lane, and it, the pond would be on your right. Yes, but I quite often would then turn left but and you walk could round the back of my house or round here and come out down by Hungry Hill Lane. Right, but, you, but, down, but, but that it's footpath filled. would be open because now it's blocked with a huge great tree trunk and we're told that it belongs to um, Lord Forty. There's a, there's a, I don't know... Big sign. 50... Pound fine? A, a small section which belongs to, to Lord Forty rather than the National Trust. I just wonder whether it, at one stage it had been open and you could always walk down there. Again, it's not, I mean, I used to walk up, down, up, tumble down, dick, <laughs> turn right towards Hatchlands, then right again, and do a sort of circuit like that. Oh, get round it that way. Mm. But that, you can get to Hatchlands that way. Yeah. But that's quite a long way round. Yeah. Certainly from your point of view. From my point of view. And yes, because you know all these wonderful footpaths, which as a newcomer to the village, I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm afraid now they're out of my range anyway, which yes, is rather yes, sad. Yes, but, yes. Um, and they weren't what I call buggy worthy. No, you it's wouldn't difficult with a little child. Yes, yeah. so yeah. it's either they want to be walking. But I did have a interesting time once. Um, and it must have been Sam. And we wanted to go for a walk. And he was very attached to his push on dog, his push dog. Oh, yes. You hold it on yes. with arms like that, and yes. you push it along. And we went up the track, the farm track, and the, the keeper really didn't want dogs because he'd just put the pheasants down. Yes. And he was in the far corner of the field. Sounds familiar, yes. And he started tearing round the field. And as he got to us, he then finally realised that this was a push-on, <laughs> push-along dog, and he's, a real he's, dog. <laughs> I said, oh, good evening, you know, good afternoon, it's a lovely day. And he, all he could do was say, oh yes, it's a lovely day. <laughs> so my child with a, push, a push-along dog You were was, allowed to go? I was so allowed to with my push-along dog, mm. but forget 
if, if you had an ordinary dog, it was going to be. He could exactly shoot it with you in charge, but. No, quite. They, Fascinating. They certainly, I mean, at one point when one of Lucy's dogs that we were looking after escaped, and Sam and Paul were really desperately going all around the village trying to find this said dog, found the keeper and said, uh, there's, a, there's a working cocker spaniel on the loose. And he basically said, if he saw it, he'd shoot it. Yes. So they both came home looking rather, mm, I and think didn't they find still, him. They would now, I yes, think. Yes, quite rightly, because the, yeah. the... It makes him work if the pheasants go in the wrong places. Oh, absolutely. When you don't know they scare them, the pheasants might curl up and die. Mm. A bit mm. like chickens and the foxes and mm. things. So, yes. Jenny, this has been fascinating. <laughs> Thank you so much. I mean, you've given us so much detail. Well, I don't think I have. Yes, you have. It, it's been wonderful, and thank you very, very much. No, I haven't offered you a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs>